India has taken a huge decision to regulate AI development in the country, and some people are saying that this could be the end of AI innovation in the subcontinent. So last week, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology came up with an advisory saying that significant tech companies need to seek permission from the government of India before deploying their AI models. Now, even though this is just an advisory, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, Minister of State for the Ministry of Electronics and IT, said that this is a signal that this is the future of regulation. And according to this advisory, and this stood out, these platforms even need to label their content so that it's easily identifiable as AI-generated content, and users need to be made aware that the content generated can be unreliable. So after the news went viral and everyone in the tech world started to criticize India's stance on AI development, saying that it would stifle innovation in the country, the minister came up with some clarification, saying that this advisory only applies to significant platforms and doesn't apply to startups. And he also said that it's aimed at untested AI platforms. But what's surprising is the fact that just less than a year back, India had said that AI was a significant and strategic area that they had no plans of regulating. Now, this decision is coming at an interesting time because of what happened with Google's Gemini. So a user asked Gemini if the Indian prime minister, Narendra Modi, was a fascist. And the answer that he got wasn't a hard yes, but it also wasn't really a no either. Now, Google did go back and fix this issue, but the response that the government of India got from Google was basically, sorry, the platform is unreliable. And this is just a matter of fact, not just with Google's Gemini, but a lot of these AI platforms, there is a varying degree of unreliability. Now, Gemini, of course, is one of the more unreliable platforms, especially when it comes to facts, so much so that Google Gemini had to shut down their image generation platform. But when it comes to facts, Google's Gemini and even ChatGPT as well suffer from what's being termed hallucinations. And these hallucinations are definitely a huge problem. In fact, Krutram AI suffered from a lot of backlash for putting out hallucination content in their beta testing. But does this mean that companies should simply stop trying to test their AI, train their AI in public, stop releasing these tools which are still in beta out into the wild? Because everybody agrees that AI is the future, and if India doesn't allow AI to grow, then companies and startups would probably much rather move outside of the country, and we might see what happened in the crypto space happening in the AI space as well. So India might lose out on a massive opportunity as entrepreneurs decide to build in a country where the rules are a lot more conducive to the development of of AI? Or could it actually just end as an advisory that only applies to significant platforms and doesn't apply to startups the way that the government is saying? Could this be the end of it and this issue won't progress and get worse and start to trickle down from the big companies to the startups? Time will tell, but I think the important question to be asking here is, is regulating AI a good idea for India? And could it also be a good idea for countries around the world? Could slowing the progress of AI, which is almost difficult to fathom at this point, AI is progressing so quickly that most people don't really have a handle on it. It doesn't seem like it's really under control anymore. It's happening. It's spreading like wildfire. And so maybe it would be a good idea to regulate and control this industry. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below and let me know where you guys stand on this issue. All right, next up in the news, but continuing to talk about Google here, this isn't the only issue that Google is facing in India. So last Friday, Google delisted 10 Indian apps from its Play Store, but why? Well, due to non-compliance with Google's billing policy, apparently. So let's understand what the core issue is here. Whenever an app is listed on Google's Play Store, it has no choice but to use Google's billing system for every transaction. And that's where the problem lies because Google is a monopoly here in India and in a lot of countries around the world. And it charges anywhere between 11 to 30% on every transaction that goes through its billing system. And again, all of these transactions have to go through Google Play Store's billing system. And that's a lot of money for these apps. That's a huge chunk of their revenue. 11 to 30% is massive, especially when these apps could be potentially using other payment gateway systems to reduce their payment charges to just 1% to 4% for each transaction if they were allowed to. Anupam Mittal even called Google the digital East India company for taxing Indian startups and apps so heavily. But it does seem like there's a happy ending to this story, at least somewhat, because after a meeting between Government of India officials and some Indian founders, Google has agreed to reinstate these apps on their Play Store and has also agreed on a 120-day period to come up with a solution. It's also worth noting that these apps have also filed a petition with the Supreme Court of India, and they're waiting for a hearing, which will happen on the 19th of March. But here's another twist that most people might not be aware of, because Indian startup founders aren't the only ones who think Google is 
is forcing their billing system on other people and thinking that that's unfair. Even Epic Games, the maker of the popular game Fortnite, has been fighting against Google's unfair business practices. In fact, last year in December, Epic Games won their antitrust case against Google. The company said that this verdict proves that Google's app store practices are illegal and they abuse their monopoly to extract exorbitant fees, stifle competition, and reduce innovation. Now, do keep in mind that a pretty big chunk of Epic Games is owned by the Chinese giant Tencent, so do what you will with that information, but it looks like this could be a, a sneak peek at what might end up happening with Google in India in their upcoming hearing. And also, on a related note, it might even be an opportunity for the Indus App Store to get more Indian apps and users onboarded onto their platform, and also convincing OEMs to bundle Indus App Store on their smartphones along with Google's Play Store to offer more democratic choice to users. So I have an important question for you guys, and I'd love to see debate in the comments section. Do you guys think that what Google is doing is actually wrong, or is this just how monopolies function in capitalist markets, and we should just accept it for what it is? Let me know in a comment down below. All right, next up in the news, after Zomato and Swiggy, quick commerce unicorn Zepto has launched their own loyalty program called Zepto Pass. And within a week of launch, it has crossed 1 million subscribers, while Backstage with Millionaires has been trying to get to 1 million for the last five years. And by the way, it costs no money for you guys to subscribe to us, unlike Zepto. So yeah, why, why not subscribe? That would be awesome. Anyways, Zepto offers free deliveries for orders above 99 rupees and up to a 20% discount on groceries for their Zepto Pass subscribers. And it really looks like they're taking a page out of Zomato's book here. They've seen a lot of benefits from their loyalty program. And so Zepto wants to do the same thing. In fact, it already seems to be working for Zepto. Last week, they said that their Zepto Pass subscribers were spending 30% more money on the platform compared to regular users. And their monthly retention has also improved by 10%. Now, these results are coming out of a pilot that they've been running. This isn't a full-on launch yet, but since out of 5 million users on Zepto, 1 million have already opted for Zepto Pass subscription within a week, this is an amazing sign for the company, and I wouldn't be surprised if they go full steam ahead in this direction. That being said, though, this could also be the huge discounts that they're offering on Zepto Pass. They're offering this at just 19 rupees, 1, 9, and 39 rupees per month for different users, as opposed to the long-term plan where they're planning to offer it at 9. 99 rupees. So we're probably gonna have to wait a little bit longer to see how many people actually stick around. But this is a really interesting development for this company. All right, next up in the news, but continuing to talk about quick commerce here, according to an end tracker report, it looks like e-commerce giant Flipkart wants to get a piece of the quick commerce pie as well. Now, Flipkart is expected to launch their quick commerce service in the next six to eight weeks across a dozen cities, but this isn't really all that surprising. The total addressable market here is estimated to be worth $45 billion and growing rapidly. But what is surprising is the fact that Flipkart hasn't entered this market yet. Now, even though they're very, very, very late to this party, they have pretty much everything that they need to build a quick commerce business. And while they might not be able to replace the likes of Zepto, Blinkit, and Swiggy Instamart in the grocery delivery segment, Flipkart might be able to win in the electronics category. And the space actually has quite a lot of surprising benefits. They can get much higher average order values with better margins than groceries. So considering the fact that Flipkart is already improving their same day delivery service across 20 cities, this could be a huge opportunity for the company. And there are also reports of Flipkart being in talks to acquire Dunzo now. And if that happens, it's going to give Flipkart all of the capabilities and learnings that it needs to build its own quick commerce business. All right, next up in the news, after Ola Electric, there have been reports now that electric scooter maker Aether Energy is planning an IPO. So it looks like the company has already started this process and could file for their IPO in mid of 2024. So according to reports, Aether might be looking to raise around $400 million at a $2 billion valuation. But Aether isn't the only company right now looking at a potential IPO because there's also reports of logistics company BlackBuck planning their $300 million IPO, which they might file by mid of 2025. Now, do keep in mind here that none of these news items are confirmed yet. So take this all with a grain of salt. We're going to offer more information once we have more clarity on the situation. All right, now let's move on to some funding news here. So Indian startups raised a total of $137 million this week, which unfortunately is significantly lower than last week's $319 million. But let's take a look at some of the companies that have raised funds this week. So first of all, we have Kolkata-based online lending platform 
platform M-Pocket, which helps students and working professionals access hassle-free loans. They raised $60 million in debt. And then up next, we have Mumbai-based identity verification and fraud detection platform IDFi, which has raised $27 million. After that, we have new Delhi-based rural commerce startup Rosanna. They raised $22.5 million. After that, we have Bengaluru-based healthcare screening service provider CardioTrack. They raised $2 million in their pre-series A round. And then finally, we have Noida-based AI startup DubPro.ai, which helps you seamlessly dub your videos into multiple languages, and they've raised $500,000 in their seed round. Now, before I let you guys go, we recently did a podcast, and it was an incredible conversation with the founder of an Indian robotics startup called Orangewood Labs. So if you're interested in knowing about their story, you can find a link to that video in the top right corner of your screen. I would highly recommend it. They're making these incredible AI-powered robotic arms. So definitely go check it out. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires. I'll catch you in the next one.